ओम श्री साई राम प्रशांति संदेश साई पर्स ऑफ विजडम वेलकम्स यू एट द टाइम भगवान वॉज इन पामिडी ए प्लेस इन दिस डिस्ट्रिक्ट बाबा सडनली लेफ्ट फॉर अनंतपुर ऑल अलोन वन डे फॉलोड क्लोज ऑन इज हील्स बाय मेंबर्स ऑफ द करणम फैमिली प्रोटेस्टिंग वेहिमेंटली अगेन सेल्स अनाउंस अ डिसीजन टू गो बैक Baba was unmoved and went on. At Anantapur, however, he agreed to stay with one of the Karanam's relatives to allay the fear of Karanam's family that his sudden departure spelt some calamity. Baba returned to Illur before coming back to Anantapur, where he again stayed for a few days. On the way, Baba had the horse-drawn carriage abruptly stopped before a studio. He instructed his host to arrange for a photograph to be taken in his house by engaging the services of the studio owner K H Raidu, a renowned photographer of the town. Rao writes that the photo session itself became a very elaborate affair. Baba was decked with garlands and made to sit on a chair covered with a tiger skin which he used to carry with him those days large size lamps and items for worship like broken coconuts and fruits were kept on the floor in plates beside Bhagawan to create an appropriate ambience Raidu used a large format portrait camera but could not focus on baba for he could not get baba on the view finder but only portraits of shirdi sai baba all the objects of the setting had turned into the portraits big or small in proportion to the size of the objects the photographer for all his dexterity and experience was bewildered Raidu had been pointlessly desperating of Baba during that time must have been graced with his special vision to make him understand the error of his ways finally Raidu managed to take Baba's photograph and this portrait is still a precious possession of Rao's family well this is a miracle where Baba consented to have a photograph session abruptly stopping in front of his studio secondly how she held the photographer raid who could not click the camera properly and he had set it right these are the two miracles that we come across during this trip according to viswanath rao baba also had lunch at the house of mr narayan rao fulfilling an earlier promise to have lunch with him Rao's mother was disappointed that Baba had not kept his word denying her the wonderful opportunity of feeding him Rao would tell what happened further when he returned after lunch my mother accosted baba you promised to come for lunch to our house but you went to somebody else's home baba said i don't get back on my promise let us go and have lunch thus baba had lunch twice that day It is again very strange to please and to bless the devotee. He agreed to have the second lunch. See this. A similar thing had happened. I remember in Delhi, he had lunch at several places. Of course, he might not have eaten just six lunches, eight breakfasts like that, because he wanted to bless all the devotees in Delhi, which he visited long back. So this is. A miracle that happened in the earlier stage. Well, a very interesting thing is this: the food habits of Baba were very frugal. He consumed very little food during lunch or dinner. He would usually mix up all the items: spicy, sweet, sour, solid, or liquid into one single mass. Before consuming them, before he ate anything himself. he would usually distribute morsels of it as prasadam to all those around him i hope you will recall what shridi bhagwan did he did a similar thing 
mixing up all food items, making them into morsels, and distribute the devotees around him. Then, coming back to Bhagavan, after the second lunch, Baba immediately decided to proceed to Pamidi, where he had not been before. Why? Because Pamidi is a commercial center, fully crowded. He wanted to avoid it, therefore he stayed in Illur, I-L-L-U-R. He asked Rao and Rao's aunt, Lalitama, to accompany him. The three of them went by bus. On the way, Baba got down at Kalur, an earlier stop, to avoid the large crowd at Pamidi bus station. Rao and his aunt, however, proceeded by bus to announce Baba's arrival. Baba arrived at Pamidi in a horse-drawn carriage, accompanied by some local merchants. He stayed in the house of Subbarangaya, a merchant of Pamidi. During the visit, Baba cured Rao's cousin of typhoid by asking him to eat a gava, most inappropriate for a fever. Baba doesn't go by the norms of medicine or dietary habits. When you ask him to eat gava, which is inappropriate, that turned to be a medicine for that typhoid patient. The next morning, when Baba was giving interviews to the members of the family of another merchant, Rama Tulasi, many people went for his darshans. Some asked for prasadam, some for worldly things, wealth and eatables and others, for cures, for complex diseases. Rao's uncle, Rasakonda Venkatramaya, a learned scholar himself, chastised the waiting crowds for asking petty things of Baba and not spiritual wisdom. Even as he was engaged, Baba sent for him and asked him to repeat what he had been speaking. When the gentleman humbly repeated that he would prefer a spiritual discourse to personal interviews, Baba promised that he would give a spiritual discourse after lunch that day. As promised, Baba did give an informal talk after lunch in which he narrated the early life history of Shirdi Sai Baba. Therefore, even in those days, we had most of the devotees gathering around him, surrounding him for petty things, for material things, for physical needs. However, there was an exception, a scholar who wanted spiritual discourse. That's the purpose of the avatar, to elevate our spiritual level. Baba stayed at Pamidi for two days. He found time to take his devotees to the Penar riverbed and materialize idols from the sand there. It only means that he repeated what he did here in Chitravati. He returned to Anantapur by the evening train from Kalur railway station. In Anantapur, as there were no crowds, Baba sat on a lounge chair, relaxing in the garden of Chidambaraya's house. Yes, Rao and others were instructed to pick flowers for worship. However, there were no flowers to which Baba was informed. He then instructed the family to go and look again. But once again, Chidambaraya's daughter returned empty-handed. Baba then climbed a tree. See the wonder. Baba then climbed a tree and pulled down one of the branches. It was laden with flowers and Chidambaraya's family enjoyed plucking them. During his stay, Baba described the various attributes of divinity in verses composed by himself. The following night, Baba left for Bangalore, accompanied by Tirumal Rao, who hailed from the same city. Tirumal Rao was a reputed honest landlord who held title to a lot of property in the city. At one time, he was considered one of Bangalore's best horticulturists and was associated with Lal Bagh, the farmed garden. His way made Queen Elizabeth curious enough to come and see the garden. In later years, Thirumal Rao became one of the close devotees of Baba and was very important 
instrument in his mission. Tirumal Rao and his wife Pushpakanti had a son Nagendra Prasad born to them. The child had one leg shorter than the other. We heard of this wonderful boy in Puttaparthi named Sat Sai Baba who was reputed to cure difficult maladies with his divine powers. So they visited Baba in 1944. Pushpakanti would say, Baba materialized a talisman for my son's cure. And though he did not recover completely, he was able to walk properly. He still has the talisman. So Swami's ability to cure ailments has been well recognized by the family. The couple had their first darshan of Baba in Bangalore during the second visit to the house of Narasimha Rao Naidu at Chamaraj Pet. Accompanied by Narasimha Rao Naidu, Baba visited Tirumal Rao's house on St. John's Road in September, staying there intermittently for a few months. Hundreds of people went to have his darshan. They were offered food which, as in Anantapur earlier, would miraculously grow to cater to all, irrespective of its initial quantity or the number of people present. This kind of miracle we heard before, where food got multiplied sufficient to the number of people that specially came for Baba's darshan. A similar thing I saw there in Kodaikanal also. Therefore, food multiplication by Baba's divine touch had been there even in the earlier period. Baba gave interviews to the visitors late at night. Sometimes, however, the crowd swelled to such an extent that Baba was obliged to go to another devotee's house by the back door. What to do? Devotees did not leave him. The crowd has been increasing. But there was a demand from another devotee asking him to visit them. So Baba had to escape through the back door. Organized bhajan singing evolved in a big way in Bangalore in 1944. Shashkar Rao, with the blessings of Baba, organized bhajans in various houses every Thursday. And Baba even materialized five photographs of Shirdi Baba and gave them to the five initial bhajan groups. By the next year, the number of bhajan singing families had doubled and the bhajan mandali was formally established. In those days, there was a military recruiting officer, Ramachandran by name, in Hindupur. Baba appeared in his dream and solved a problem that was troubling him and told him to come to Puttaparthi. Ramachandran did not understand the message properly. Baba again appeared at 4 a.m. in Ramachandran's dream and reminded him to come to his place. The officer left till the early morning in his jeep and went to another Puttaparthi located in Bhagepalli. None of the people there knew about Sai Baba and the Puttaparthi he lived in. At last, someone suggested that there was a Sai Baba at the Puttaparthi near Bukkapatnam. Baba was then in Subama's house. I was also there along with some others. Manti Maduchana Babaya recollects those days and narrates this way. Baba said, at well noon, an officer will come from Hindupur. Sometimes after Baba told us that the officer had reached Karnataka Nagepalli, within 10 minutes, Ramachandran came and prostrated before Baba. At that time, Baba was a small boy, wearing shorts and a shirt. Ramachandran took Baba in the jeep around Puttaparthi. This was the first ever motorized vehicle to move in the village. All were surprised and the special spectacle. The driver had removed the top and Ramachandran requested that Baba get up into the jeep. As the procession moved around the village, the officer was very happy that he did not have to keep the vehicle engine running throughout the procession. Why? The villagers pushed the vehicle all the way, all the way, like they pushed the chariot. Ramachandran also took Baba to Hindupur in his jeep. In addition, he arranged for a procession accompanied by a florally decorated 
vehicle to honor Baba. Most of the businessmen and Hindu poor criticized Ramchandran for doing so, remarking that he was arranging a procession for a mere boy. The recruiting officer had a driver by name Prahalad Rao. He was very lazy, but whenever he had to go to Puttaparthi, he was very enthusiastic. So Swami, being taken a procession in a motor vehicle, took place for the first time there. T. Ramasarma, a classmate of Baba at Bukkapatnam, would narrate an interesting experience. After obtaining ESLC, meaning after graduation at the high school level, they get this ESLC certificate. He joined Hindu poor in June 1943. In 1944, I heard that Baba Bhattarazu from Puntaparthi had become Sai Baba and he had once studied in Bukhapatnam. I was curious to see the boy. I took my books and did not go to school. Instead, I went to Hindupur railway station and surprisingly, I saw Sai Baba there. I recognized him as our Satcha because he happened to be his classmate earlier. I greeted him. Hey, you, without respect. Immediately, I recalled my mistake and was embarrassed. I apologetically told people around him, I'm sorry, we are childhood friends. Please don't mistake me. But Satya did not mind at all. Instead, he patted me and inquired about the welfare of each one of our classmates when we were there, then studying. The military recruitment officer had brought him to Hindupur to honor him. They took Baba in a procession in a florally decorated open vehicle accompanied by a musical band from the railway station gate to the officer's house. Baba asked me to accompany him in the procession along with the band. He gave me a lot of attention and fed me sumptuously. He came to Hindupur in the morning and went back to Puttaparthi by evening. This was the narration of uh, T. Ramasarma, his classmate at Bukhapatnam. This clearly shows how he cares for people and that he never forgets anybody. His then classmates long back and extended all love towards them, making them very happy. We'll meet in the next session. Sairam.